Welcome once again to the platform Nigeria. We are live at the Covenant Place, Igomu, Lagos. The platform is powered by the Covenant Christian Center. Our next speaker is His Excellency, the former Governor of Anambra State, Mr. Peter Obi. Peter Gregory Obi is the recent past Governor of Anambra State. He's an alumnus of Nigeria University, of University of Nigeria on Suka, Harvard Business School, Lagos Business School, Kellogg School of Management, London School of Economics and Political Science, Columbia, Oxford, and Cambridge Universities. While in office, he served as the Chairman Board of Security and Exchange Commission and as a Special Advisor to the President on Finance. He is the former Chairman of Fidelity Bank and has also held other executive positions in several blue chip companies in Nigeria. Well, I, I will start by thanking Pastor and his uh, and his team. But I, I'm sure if you're in my position, you'll be feeling so bad standing here that everything is being said about politicians, and I'm the only politician here. Well, let me thank let me thank the Pastor. This is a wonderful, wonderful work. I came here. And listening to all the speeches, the reason why I wanted to know what is all this all about when I was invited. I've never seen this before, I've never watched it before. So when they invited me, they insist, oh, I must, but they kept texting me, kept, and they said, well, let me just come and see what these people are doing around this place. I didn't know it's a place where politicians run into trouble. We have a country. We have a country where I, I give you a few. I know they say statistics don't work, but I need to use a few statistics to tell you how good and bad things are and what you can do based on what every speaker here has said. This year, your country is expected to, you know, our expected revenue for this year. 7.2 trillion from both the states and the federal government. The expected expenditure is 11.4 trillion. Is 11.4 trillion? That's a, a deficit of about 4.2 trillion. This is the type of debt that have already been incurred a year ago by the same government. They will tell you today that Nigerian debt to GDP is under 20% is small. That is what you hear. This year, the federal government provided for debt servicing 38% of their budget, of the revenue, 38% to service the debt. Because the revenue they are getting is not enough Half of the year, they use 51% to service the debt and they are borrowing more. You will see how words like, we are going to spend our way out of recession. I'm sure you have heard it. There is nothing wrong in borrowing. Let me say it here. Just like we are talking about selling assets. There is nothing wrong in borrowing. But the question is, what are you borrowing for? In a recession, the only way to come out of recession is to do what? Spend for growth. And you can only spend for growth either from savings or from borrowing. And since you don't have savings, you read it how our savings we have squandered, whether it's good, excess good, anything, by the governors, everybody was right. The money is gone. But now, in order to spend, we need to borrow. And there's nothing wrong in borrowing, but 
the question is what are you borrowing for are you borrowing for consumption are you going for production the fear is that we are borrowing for consumption because we can't see what we use the past borrowing or what we sold before for and that is the crisis we face and that is the critical thing everybody has to watch when you borrow for consumption when you have no savings you're heading for a disaster and i give you an example using two countries when they talk about debt to gdp uh, the country with the highest debt to gdp is japan japan debt to gdp is 246 percent however japan have the highest net asset of any country in the world they have 1.3 trillion in u.s bonds and dollar bonds and everything so they have money so they can afford to borrow greeks have 180 percent because they didn't have money they collapsed because there was no savings and that is the crisis so when you see people like me say when they wanted to give money to governors and say bail out i was a governor i should be supporting it but i disagreed i said no before we give them the money let them tell us what they are doing because it is wrong for us to pay a bill of a drunk while he's sitting in the bar he has to come out of the bar first and he was not what he has drunk before and that is where i disagree i believe that for me i don't want to talk about federal government today my topic is the topic they gave me is cutting the cost of governance and i don't want to talk about federal government other experts will talk about them but let me talk about where i serve the sub-national government the out of this 11.4 trillion expenditure expected this year the states are 5.4 and i believe that this 5.4 we can save at least a trillion at least they won't borrow it because it's going to be borrowed we can save a trillion and people will say to me how are you going to save it how what i always say it out of this so-called 4.5.4 trillion 12 to 15 percent is used in running the office of the governor including the so-called controversial security vote aids everything takes almost between 12 and and you're looking at about 600 to 800 billion thereby i want you to listen to me thereby if you decide to reduce it to three to five percent it will be two, between 200 and 300 billion you save at least 450 to 600 billion that's a saving of 450 billion if you decide to do proper procurement competitive procurement that is competitive you save as much as the same amount so with these two you've saved almost 900 billion if you decide to do away with the unconstitutional office of first lady it's very unconstitutional and has a lot of confusion to the what is happening it costs an average state today about two billion to run that office and all the office does is create confusion it, so if you do away with it as seven as two billion average in a state you have saved additional to two billion which is 72 billion naira add it to our 900 we are 970 if you decide today the average most states have about an average of six bulletproof vehicles today is about 100 million naira for one and if you time six 100 million today times six then times 36 it comes to it comes to about 21.6 billion but if you reduce it to two it will be about 7.2 billion and you save and you save about 14 point something billion if you decide the average government has have about 27 25 jeeps today's price is about 35 to 40 million 
so you're looking at an average of if you use 35 is 875 million naira each multiplied by 36 again if you reduce it from 8 25 to 8 you save about 15 billion we don't need this batch rider or whatever they what the people that create and a lot of noise you don't need that machine you can go without them each of those machines each of those machines one minute each of those machines each of those machines costs about 15 12 to 15 million naira and i can tell you most of have about six seven eight of them if we do away with them you will find out that it's at another service of probably three million three billion naira traveling one minute traveling every government every government house or governor can tell you the number of traveling budgets logistics the colleges of name is almost 600 500 to 600 million i believe you can do with if you times again 600 times 36 i believe you can do all your travels for a third of that you said 115 so if you look at what i've showed you now you're going to save over one trillion and i can tell you it is practical people will say to me peter how is this possible how is it not possible my dear i was the governor <laughs> when i came to office when i came to office my first three my first four three four trips to abuja i traveled with over 30 people over 30. everybody have a title to be in the plane everybody have a title to do this so wait a minute i'm the only person invited to abuja i pay for 30 people 